Well, what a wonderful world. You're just uploading the last video, which explains that a doubling of CO2 could only... A doubling, which is... We're not talking about that, by the way. But even a doubling only leads to 0.7 degrees C, and then the clouds come in, of course, to reduce that. But um, this new paper comes out in a leading climate journal that states it's actually 0.72 and not what the alarmists so are saying. So totally backs up the video I've just finished. And that was really delightful for me to have. Uh, so the net effect is um, just as we've been saying, that it's just not right what the alarmists are claiming. So let me take you to this new, um, this new paper now. Um, this is the headline for it. New Journal of Climate Study reduces doubled CO2 climate sensitivity by 40% to 0.72 degrees centigrade. And now, if you look back to what I've just done, here's the temperature according to satellites that we've been getting, and here's the, that's the observations, and here, here are the models, all of which are three times, about three times faster warming than the observed. They're all wrong. And um, that red line is like, uh, the, the line there, that red line is like, putting 102 people who have all you proven them all wrong uh, because they don't agree with observation into a room and telling them to come up with an average. So the red line is the average of all the models, all of which are wrong anyway. So it's an average of wrongs and how this is diminishing over time. But now it's meeting exactly what the true scientists like William Happer and so on have been stating all the time. And it's great news. So what does this new paper say? Well, this is the paper published in the Journal of Climate. It'll cost you quite a lot of money to actually view it because they do charge, I think, about 45 euros to be able to view all the details. So all I'm going to do here is summarise some of the points from it. Well, this new study, as you can see here, look at the highlighted part. These forcing values, they've taken the actual doubling of the of the co2 they've taken that at three different levels so they've taken the effect uh, at the top of the atmosphere that that's called toa they've taken it in the um troposphere which is obviously um lower lower down it's the it's the atmosphere we live in and they've taken it on the ground and what they've found is these forcing values um uh, represent 0 0.72 degrees c 0 0.55 degrees c and 0.18 degrees C temperature differential for a doubling of CO2. So at the three different levels, I mean, the highest, the highest is 0.72. And of course, this doesn't take into effect, as I mentioned in the previous video, clouds or other mitigating factors, if you like. So this is quite a, a um, you know, serious thing. But what else does it say? I'll just read a bit of it. Chen and colleagues also report that CO2 has no effect on atmospheric transmissivity due to absorption saturation. That's what I've been talking about. The bucket gets full. CO2 can have no effect beyond its pre-industrial concentration, which is exactly what I claimed in the previous video, and because water vapour and cloud forcing overlap and thus dominate absorption in the CO2 band. You could not get a clearer explanation of what I've been claiming. Another quote from the paper, transmissivity in the CO2 band centre is unchanged by increased CO2 as the absorption is already saturated. The next, another one, the water vapour and CO2 overlapping at an absorbing band prevents absorption by additional CO2. Finally, water vapour serves to dampen the warming effect of the increased CO2, which calls into question the IPC's water vapour positive feedback claims. And the last one. The water vapour usually damps the double CO2 forcing by reducing energy additional CO2 can absorb. Yet another thing that came out of this study is the cooling of Antarctica and how the extra CO2 the extra, actually helps it cool. In other words, there's the exact opposite effect of what the IPCC are claiming. And even if you look at this last year, meant to be the hottest year on record, Antarctica was getting cooler. It, it, you know, it, in fact, the ice now even in the Arctic is the highest it's been at this time of year for 21 years. 
it is not as you're being told. Um, you can go for Guardian stories, which Jim Dale seems to rely on as his evidence, all the time. It doesn't work. And I think the tide of science now is gradually catching up with this alarmism nonsense. And we've got people like the recent uh, Nobel Prize winner for physics, you know, um, um, backing backing this more CO2 actually joining as a director of more, of the CO2 coalition. And you've got this to join William Happer. And I think there's two Nobel Prize physicists in that who are backing what I say. All I do is report basically on other people's work. That's all I do. I just try to bring it together to make it as simple as possible to understand. I'm trying to reach everyone with this as best I can. And I know um, sometimes it's difficult, you know, to, to for me to explain the science. I'm doing my very best. And I'm sometimes having to use simple terminology, which is maybe you could argue about in detail. I mean, I could go on about high clouds and what the debate is about high clouds and whether they actually warm or cool the planet. There's all sorts of work on that. I know Will Happer, uh, and I think Vanguard in his name, are doing work now on the clouds. So, and I've got all sorts of current things going on. Science doesn't work in dead simple steps like this. It works gradually by an accumulation of things. And that's what I'm trying to show. Now, um, tomorrow, I've got another one with um, Jim on on, uh, on, <laughs> on GB News. And I know he's got some graphs. I mean, in a normal environment, we'd share the graphs beforehand, etc. Well, no, no, this has to be gotcha moments. And Jim seems to want that it's his turn for graphs tomorrow. And I've objected to that because if he gives me evidence, I should be able to counter it how I want. So I'm trying to maintain that principle now instead of the childish principle of, of taking turns on giving evidence, as it were. Ridiculous. So um, that's the end of this relatively short one for me. Um, I'm just excited about another paper um, that comes out reinforcing the tide of evidence. Since the Industrial Revolution, CO2 has helped a bit, but now it's fairly clear that it's only had a small contribution to the warming. The rest is natural. It really is natural. The CO2 was saturated pretty well before the Industrial Revolution. So what we're seeing is natural. And the bad news in that is if you look at the natural, we're entering a cooling period, we're more or less cusping at the warm now, and we're going to be coming down. Okay, thank you for watching. Thank you.